So can anyone explain? I mean, this is an old question, but it has still been asked a lot of time in most of the interview. Uh, can anyone explain the difference between set UID, STID, and this sticky bit? And what happens behind the scene when you set this, this particular bits or this particular ID? First of all, can anyone tell me what do you mean? What do you mean by set UID? So it's basically called set user ID upon execution. Similarly, it's called set group ID upon execution. And anyone know what is for sticky bit? OK. So let's start with this set UID or this set uh, user ID bit. So what is the main role of this one? OK. So basically, uh, I mean, this you have. Uh, if you have read the doc about the set UID, you will see this explanation all over again. And I will just try to uh, use the same uh, example. So let's take an example of a simple password command, right? And me as a user, for so example, if I have a user ID called P Lakera, and I can execute this password command to change my password, right? Okay, but if you look at the back end, it is updating a file called etc shadow. And this file is owned by the root user. Okay, so how can a normal user like me can change or write to this particular file etc shadow? Okay, so that is where it's called set UID taken into place. So what exactly happened? So for example, I'm in my bash shell, and I'm executing this command called passwd. Okay. So what bash will do under the hood, it execute a call system call called execve. And when this call was getting executed, it see that, OK, the set UID bit is set for this particular you uh, for this particular binary okay again remember set for this particular binary so whenever it see that this set uid bit is set for this binary it will execute with the permission of that binary for of the user who owns that binary so normally this password need to be executed with the permission of pilakera user who is executing this command but when this set UID bit is set, this binary will be executed with the permission of the user who own the file. So in this case, I can show you guys. I'm not lying. You see, this file is owned by the root user, etc shadow. So when this uh set UID bit is set, it will, and I will show you this one, let us type on L, which passed WD. This S is for set UID bit. Okay. So when this will be set, the set UID bit, this will be executed with the permission of the user who owns this file, not with the user who is executing this file. And you will see like how dangerous it is. Like if any rogue user who set this set UID can simply, I mean, take control of your system. Okay, so one last time, let me repeat it again. You logged into your system. You are executing the password command with your user. Under the hood, it executes the system call. When this call is executed and it see that, okay, this set UID bit is set, Rather than executing this particular command with the permission of the Pilakera user, it will execute with the permission of the user who own this file. Rather than this, particular like whenever the user is like get uh, want to get some special permission, that's or like the already set the space uh, set UID. Are you getting uh, as we getting so uh, like whenever the user is um, finding like the 
commands running by the root user only by the owner so generally we are doing this type of permissions yeah you summarize it well i don't see many use cases of set uid to be honest now but this is one use case where you want like this user to be executed with the permission of the root user so rather than using his own permission he you need to use the permission of the the uh, the root user and to answer neha question no you don't need to so for example i have logged into with this user id right i can check it like this who am i i'm pilakera and if i execute this password command i don't need to use the sudo i can change it by just typing the password command so that is how i mean this suid is working behind the scene it is getting a permission of the user who own this particular binary oh okay uh, so if if i may ask so uh, it would uh, give the user the root access exactly. ultimate so that's a dangerous situation to be in right yeah because that's the only way you can write inside this etc shadow file a normal user cannot write inside this etc shadow file right i showed yeah. you like this is owned yeah. by the root user yes only in when that this transfer of permission happen then only you can able to write inside that file in a nutshell it is uh, making a owner of that file for the temporary uh, only for proper. that transition yeah so prashant suppose we are providing the a user which <laughs> is having this type of permission in sudo or or at c sudo so it it might be a work in their case also or not it definitely not. i mean i have went tried it and that's why i said that i do not find much use case of this suid bit anymore uh, this is one case where i know that it has been used but uh, to be honest with the sudos and everything i have never tried it i will love to try it but i have never tried it and i don't see many use cases of suid uh, i mean currently i haven't seen much of the use case of this and let's move to the second thing which is called set gid or set group id it works on the exactly the same principle okay you as a user uh, okay let me try to explain this in a simple term and then i will go with the system call so again these are all the historical concept okay so let's say i have a i have created a directory called my share okay and i have a team members called a b and c i don't know why i'm coming up with this name we have this three user okay and they have the permission to write inside this directory called my share and this again i'm talking in terms of like in in the year 2000 when we used to work like this right we have one shared folder nowadays we have the svn or git or whatever uh, version control system so i have created this directory called my share and these three users they have the permission to write inside this directory now let's say this user a okay let me specify this user a so it will be much clear user b and user c okay so these users they have a permission to write inside the directory let's say this user a created a file called uh, user a.txt now the problem with this file is that the guy who created this file he is going to own the file so at the same time if this user b he want so this directory i have created for collaboration right so that people can collaborate here but now only this user a can modify this file similarly if user b created a file called user b.txt sorry i am coming with up with this all this horrible naming so only he can modify that file so there is no point of collaboration here right so if in this by share directory if i set something called set gid bit then let's say this my share directory is created by share a user let's say okay and this is also a group owner of this file let me repeat again 
I have created this directory called my share and this share A and share A, right? So, and let's say at the same time, this all these users, they are the member of this group. So this is user and this is group. So these are all are the member of the group. And I have said that even they are the member of this group and that's why they are able to write inside the directory. Only the user who created the file, they will be able to write inside this file, right? Now, when you set the set GID bit, whenever you are going to create a file inside this shared folder, it will be owned by this group ID. So this user a.txt, the user for this file is user A, but the group of this file will be this share A. And because all the members, they are already the part of this share A user group, now they will be able to modify this file. And this is only happening because we have this set GID bit. And how this happen? Again, it follows the same process. We have this exec VCE call setup. And whenever I see, okay, this is a set GID bit, which has been set. We will see this with the help of one practical example. It will say, okay, rather than giving this user A, the user and the group permission of this particular file, I will make share A, the group owner, to be the group owner of this particular file. Any confusion or did I confuse you guys? So basically the idea is rather than the individual user own this file, the group is going to own this file whenever this set GID bit is set so that all the other users, they will be able to write inside this file. That's the simple idea behind the set GID bit. It's like active directory things like, right? Create a group and add those users in that. I don't work on Active Directory, so I have no idea how it works. But John, basically, it's creating. Actually, yeah. I didn't able to figure it out the difference. Actually, if I give the this group as a group permission, even so, then also the users have the same permission. So, like, why how this difference? If I make but, the group as a group owner, like of this folder, so what is the difference am I, in that case? Manchu, Manchu, for that you have to update uh, the ownership every time. Okay. But if uh, set GID is set, so whenever the new file will be created, uh, it will having the default uh, ownership. You can say that. For you that are saying that if, if you are saying this, we can change the change ownership and what Mohit has said exactly. So you need to change the ownership every time. But with set GID set, you don't need to change the ownership. It will be automatically been set with the group ownership. And once again, all these are kind of a historical concept. I don't know who are using it, but somehow these type of questions once again came coming back in the interview. So that's why, and this is one of the most asked question during the interview. And so let me try to complete the last part, sticky bit. And I will explain it to you guys with the help of an example so that it will be much clearer to you, these concepts. The last one is a sick, sticky bit. So we have seen that we have, uh, fix one of this issue where the file is now being owned by the group and not by the individual user. But this lead to a case where, okay, if there is one rogue user, he can delete a file. So that's why this concept of sticky bit comes. The idea behind a sticky bit is that the guy who owns the file. So for example, if this user A owns this file, only he can delete the file, not a user B even if he's a member of that particular group. So the person who owns the file, only he's responsible for deleting the file. If anyone else try to delete the file, the permission will be denied unless or until that user will be a root user because root is a super user. So the person who create the file or root user can delete the file. No one else can delete the file. And the place where you will see this, the use of sticky bit is slash TMP directory, because this is a temporary directory or this is world writable. So anyone can create a file inside this slash TMP directory. But we want, so for example, if this my user P Lakera who create the file, only I want this particular user to uh, delete the file over there. 
no one else can delete the file. OK. So let me show you with the help of one example. I have created the script. And let me ping you guys this repo, which I forget to give it to you guys yesterday. And hard versus soft link. No, sorry, not hard versus soft link. Well, it's much better if I can explain this code to you guys here. So basically, you will see I'm creating one file and just do some error handling to see if the file created properly or not. Then I'm setting up something called set UID bit, which has been set at the user level because we have spoken about it that, OK, this particular user who is going to take the permission of the user who is on that particular binary. So U plus S, I'm setting it up. Then I'm checking if the set UID is set properly or not. OK, just some error handling again. Then I'm trying to find out the permission of that file, just checking if the sticky bit, uh, sorry, set UID bit is set or not. And then if it is set, everything fine. Similarly, then I'm creating a directory, setting up this set GID bit, again doing some error handling, checking if the set UID bit is set properly or not. Similarly, for sticky bit also. Okay, so let me show you with the help of this. Set UID. So, and okay, it's deleted a file. So let me delete the file. So for Set UID, you will see this bit will be set. For SGID, you will see this bit will be set. And for sticky bit, this T. Okay. 